All right. Sister Doty, if you're talking, you're talking on. Okay, did you did you leave the door open or not? Yes, I'll leave it open. Okay. Oh. Praise God. Um, so, are you recording, Miss Charlotte? It's recording. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right. Um, would you like to start off by reading the 91st Psalm? Yes, uh, I need to pull it up. Sorry about that, I was muted. <laughs> he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noiseless pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh of thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. Thou shalt bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stump. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and Adam, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Um, I mean, just pray. Father God, we just thank you that you watch over your word to perform it, Father God. And I thank you, Father God, and that everybody that's supposed to be here is here, Father. That your word is true and everything else is a lie, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We thank you for the 91st Psalm that Charlotte just read, that we are all under your wings, that you are protecting us and watching over us all the days of our lives, for we belong to you. And we thank you for everything, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So uh, would... Uh, you like to, Eloise, are you there? Are you going to uh, do a couple of songs? I'm here with bells on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, praise God. Can you, uh, we're waiting then. It's all yours. The floor is yours. All right, let's worship. I'm going to do a few song, a uh, song I've already done and then another one. And um, yeah, I will do that now. <laughs> You sold me 
When I was a stranger and you called me as your own, you showed me grace undeserving, a love I've never known. And what else could I do? Become so by you. You're the one great passion burning in my life. I spend all my days for the cause of Christ. You're the sole desire that I keep before me. My one great passion will be your glory, my devotion is pure and unrelenting, I yearn for you are spirit, take me ever deeper, you're the rhythm of this heart. And what else could I do be consoled by you? You're the one great passion burning in my life. I spend all my days for the cause of Christ. You're the sole desire that I keep. Before me, my one great passion will be, will be your glory, your glory, your glory, my endless pursuit. I'm running after you, you're the one great passion burning in my life. I'll spend all of my days for the cause of Christ. You're the sole desire that I keep before me. My one great passion will be, will be your glory. Your glory, your glory, my endless pursuit, I'm running after you, my endless pursuit, I'm running after you. Praise God. How's the sound? Sounds great. Sounds great. We were having a bit of trouble with it this morning, so I was just checking. <laughs> All right. When I am a wasteland, you are the water. When I am the winter, you are the fire. When I am a long night, you are the sunrise. When I am a desert, you are the river. To find me. What have I done to deserve love like this? What have I done to deserve love like this? Your voice like a whisper, breaking the silence. 
You say there's a treasure. You look till you find it. You search to find me. What have I done to deserve like this? Ooh, what have I done to deserve like this? I cannot earn what you so freely give. What have I done to deserve like this? Praise God. Praise God. Yes. Did you have another one or did you want to wait till afterwards, Eloise? Um, I can do one after. Okay. Praise God. Oh, sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to welcome everybody that's here. And um, also, if you'd like to talk, unmute yourselves and talk. Sometimes people will answer a question or want to talk and as so many times I've done it myself and I've not unmuted myself and so nobody can hear and then it's too late because conversations have gone on. <laughs> yes, and to keep people from stepping on, um, I'm sorry, my, my camera's off, and to keep people from stepping on each other, you know, uh, and, and conversations, if you'll look at the the bottom there should be a raise hand so if, if there's something that uh, you want to say in response to somebody else uh, then just go ahead and raise your hand and, and then sister Doty you know or, or whoever is talking at the time will you know just just pause and, and uh, tell you to go ahead or, or basically direct you until you get used to the room Praise yeah God. um brenda is trying to unmute i saw in the chat okay um uh, i don't know are you on a phone or are you on a if if you're on a phone i, I don't know how to help you if, if you want us to we can unmute you you could uh okay i'm gonna un i'm gonna unmute you brenda on three one two three you're unmuted sister brenda okay all right i've unmuted her i i don't understand why we can't hear she her. might have problems with her mic or something maybe it's not no we can't hear you yeah Well, we're going to go ahead and start. And uh, I guess this week's going to be a little bit different because, I mean, I know what we're reading and, um, and things about the blood, but I'm playing it by ear. I'm not, uh, have not gone over anybody's Bible studies or anything like that. <laughs> and um, just to know, I know 
with all this coronavirus and everything going on, we know that the ones that belong to him are protected and were watched over. But I want us to start to read and go to uh, take your Bibles and go to Exodus chapter six. While everybody's looking, Brenda, you might want to leave and then come back and maybe it'll come on. What do you think, Charlotte? Sometimes that, sometimes yeah. that actually helps. So you might want to do that. And um, I hope is uh, Mr. Klaus coming in. Uh, he's uh He's having to uh, reinstall his uh, Chrome, and uh, something something happened uh, to his to his tablet, so he's having to reinstall everything. I'm assuming he's going to come in just as soon as uh, he gets through installing it. Okay. And uh, yes. Okay. Um, yes, there there he is. Yes. Oh, praise God. You okay. might need to do a sound check, Sister Doty. Okay. Dr. Klaus, uh, I can't hear him, Doty. Okay. I'm gonna I, I had to unmute oh he had to unmute okay can you hear me now oh uh, we hear great we hear you great yeah okay. I wanted to get on with my iPad because I have a headphones that are much better but I tried to join uh, zoom and meet up and chrome and all this and I just couldn't get in there I wanted an ID I never had an ID to give them so maybe next time i'll tr i'll try again on my ipad yeah oh well, glad you're here yep um okay so we were gonna go to read exodus chapter six and we're gonna read one through 13. I mean, I mean, just reading these scriptures and going over them just to know how much God loves his people through all their disobedience and rebellion. And he just loves us. Okay. And it says, uh, then the Lord said to Moses, now you will see, I'm sorry, I have to I think it's a little bigger for my eyes. Now you will see what I do to Pharaoh. Because of my mighty hand, he will let them go. Because of my mighty hand, he will drive them out of his country. God also said to Moses, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob as God Almighty. But my name, the Lord, I did not make myself known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan where they live as aliens. Moreover, I have heard the groanings of the Israelites whom the Egyptians are enslaving and I have remembered my covenant. Therefore say I, I'm sorry, therefore say to the Israelites, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and a mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. 
and I will bring you to the land I swore with uplifted hand to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. We'll give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. Moses reported this to the Israelites, but they did not listen to him because of their discouragement and cruel bondage. Then the Lord said to Moses, go tell, tell Pharaoh king of Egypt to let the Israelites go out of, the, out of his country. But Moses said to the Lord, if the Israelites will not listen to me, why would Pharaoh listen to me? since I speak with faltering lips. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron about the Israelites and Pharaoh king of Egypt, and he commanded them to bring the Israelites out of Egypt. Okay. The reason I wanted to go through these scriptures here is that the Egyptians, even though Moses, I mean the Israelites, even though Moses went and told God's people, what to do they still didn't listen they still didn't want to follow they didn't care but guess what god still went and said you go to pharaoh and you still get my people out you go get the israelites out that's how much god loved his people he could have just said well forget it you know you don't want me fine but he just pressed on he pressed on um does anybody like to have any comments on any of that that we just read or anything? Okay, there's, he definitely, there, there's a okay. Psalm 78 that also shows how God repeatedly tried to reach out to his rebellious people who were sacrificing even their kids to false gods and everything else. So that, that's another one some, you might want to read sometime. Oh, yeah. Well, how awesome is that? I mean, giving up their own kids and God still giving them the opportunity. But, you know, you take it from back then and look at today. There's so many people out there. People try to reach out to them and tell them about Jesus, but they're still reje rejecting. They still reject. And they're in bondage, just like the Israelites were in bondage. And they get discouraged, like the people in that were in bondage in Egypt. They're um, they're just discouraged and they, they think they don't understand that there's a way out. There's, they just don't understand. Okay. So now, um, let's go to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter I'm going to read it in my Bible instead of my phone because the letters are a lot bigger. <laughs> okay, and uh, let's see here. We go. Sister Dodie, did you want me to screen share this or did you want to just do it? Um, well, we're going to read it. I don't care. We're going to read 1 through 13, I believe. I'm not sure unless, no, we're going to read 1 through 14. Yeah, you can screen share that. Exodus 12, 1 through 14. Okay. Okay. And here it says, uh, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Verse 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish, 
a male of the first year, he shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And if you think about it, if you stop there a minute, Jesus is our lamb. And he was without any blemishes. Um, it's a shadow from before and after um, of things to come. But here it's showing you that it's saying to take one that has no blemishes. And ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the house houses wherein they shall eat. What I thought was interesting, well, we'll go on to verse eight and then I'll make that comment. And they shall eat the flesh in the night, roast with the fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs that they shall eat it. How interesting that when we take communion, he says, you know, this is my body and to eat it. Back then they had to sacrifice the lamb. They used the blood for the doorposts, but they had to eat. They had to eat the lamb, eat the lamb. Okay, eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire his head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of the remain until let of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And this shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Um you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt, and this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast until the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by the ordinance forever. So, um... Right there, you know, a type in shadow. A type in shadow. Uh, if anybody would like to comment or say something, you're welcome to right now. Okay. Um, Let me see. So we're going to go to uh, Hebrews 9 right now. Verses 1, we're going to read verses 1 through 15. Um, would somebody like to read that? <laughs> Sister Dodie, my computer just went yeah, I can read it. Oh, great. Thanks. Now, even the first covenant had regulations 
of divine worship and the earthly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle prepared, the outer one, in which were the lampstand and the table and the sacred bread. This is called the holy place. Behind the second veil, there was a tabernacle, which is called the Holy of Holies, having the golden altar of incense and the Ark of the Covenant covered on all sides with gold, in which was a golden jar holding the manna and Aaron's rod, which budded and the tables of the covenant. And above it were the cherubim of glory overshadowing the mercy seat. But of these things, we cannot now speak in detail. Verse six, now when these things had have been so prepared, the priests are continually entering the outer tabernacle, performing the divine worship. But into the second, only the high priest enters once a year, not without taking blood, which he offers for himself and for the sins of the people committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit is signifying this, that the way into the holy place has not yet been disclosed while the outer tabernacle is still standing, which is a symbol for the present time. Accordingly, both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot make the worshiper perfect in conscience, since they relate only to food and drink and various washings, regulations for the body imposed until a time of reformation. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things to come, he entered through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not, not made with hands, that is to say, not this creation, and not through the blood of goats and calves, but through his own blood, he entered the holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling those who have been defiled, sanctify for the cleansing of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. For this reason, Jesus, he is the mediator of a new covenant so that since a death has taken place for the redemption of the transgressions that were committed under the first covenant, those who have been called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. One Amen. 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 So, he was, he is, and he will always be the lamb that was slain for us our sacrifice and no longer will we have to do any of those things but um and we're protected we're protected and as he, charlotte read in psalms 91 how he we are under his wings that he is taking care of us um the blood is so important because Jesus was without blemish, just as they had to use that as a sacrifice because back then there wasn't Jesus. And do the comparison I wanted to make is that like today with the coronavirus and people being afraid and freaking out and, and everything, back then he was told, they were told, if you are behind the blood, there nothing is going to hurt you. Nothing is going to befall you. Uh, just stay behind the blood at, of the doorposts. And it, through their obedience, nothing could hurt them. And we have the blood of Jesus Christ. Everybody that is called by his name, everybody that has received him, um, according to Romans chapter 10, anyone that calls upon his name, they are saved. And um, the thing is, fear gets out of hand, and it almost seems like fear is the opposite of, it. well, it doesn't seem like, it is the opposite of faith. So if you know, if you know, if you have Christ in your life, if you have Jesus Christ in your life, you are protected. You are taken care of. You know, but you got to know him. <laughs> you have to receive him. And 
so just like now all the one the people that are going crazy that don't know christ they're not not just here in this country but in all the countries they don't know him and they can't i mean it's just it's crazy but there's and i know there's a lot of people that i've spoken to that are christians that have gone through this and they're like i have peace i have peace um there is no fear here and that's because God has given us that peace and, uh, and the assurance of who he is, you know? Um, and the other interesting thing is it's good to take communion because even back then he had said to eat back then they were to eat the, all the flesh of the lamb or the goat that they had sacrificed. So, Today, it, the Bible says to take the communion as often as you can in remembrance of me. He says, take this, the, the bread, which is his body that was broken for us, and the blood that, you know, covers a multitude of sin. So I hope and, and, and believe that the Christians will also do this, not just in church, but at home. I mean, you know, nowadays you can't even go to big churches or anything because they're closed down. But uh, it's good that when you're in prayer to take communion, if you don't have, you know, back then it was unleavened bread. But, you know, God knows your heart. God knows what you have. If you take a cracker, water, you, you pray over it. And you take, you take communion. Um, yes, uh, does anybody have any comments about that? Sister Doty, that just tells me just how precious the blood is. That uh, when you were talking about putting it on the doorposts. Yes. How the Lord just, you know, he and his household. Yes. I, I, I don't know. It's just. Um, let's go to, I don't, uh, let's see. It's just one scripture, 1 John chapter 4, verse 3. Can you say that again? 1 John chapter 4, verse 3. I've got it. You want me to read verse three? Yes, please. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Amen. You read, that was, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, look, I know I'm glad you read that. Praise God. <laughs> but I'm, I'm sorry. Charlotte, can you read John 14, verse 6? Which John, Dodie? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you just read that one scripture because not, a, you know, there is a spirit of Antichrist around. So that probably meant needed to be say said but regular john matthew mark john john 14 verse 6 all right john 14 verse 6 yes jesus saith unto him i am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me amen 
That's right. So, um, you know, back then they had temples raised and the only one that did the sacrificing and everything were the high priests uh, do, doing the sacrifices. And Jesus became our high priest. So we no longer need to do those sacrifices. The thing is that when we pray to the Father, we're always to pray in the name of Jesus. We pray to the Father and we pray in the name of Jesus because it's his blood that cleanses us. And it's his blood that we're able to come to the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And uh, so now we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Okay, I'm going to read it because I have it written down in my notes. So The whole chapter, sister. Oh, no, 1 to 13. Okay. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world sh shall be judged by you, are ye wor unworthy to to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this law? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this law, set them to judge who will at least stand in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother, go along with brother, and that before the unbelievers. Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, ye do wrong and defraud, and that your brethren. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye were washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will be not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both. It and the, now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. Amen. Yes. I don't know how far you wanted me to go, sister. I'm sorry. You know, uh, you know, I had it put it there, but we probably should should continue. But here it tells you, um, we're sanctified in verse 11. We are sanctified. Through all those other things they are done away with, we are not under the law, and we are sanctified through the blood of Jesus. Amen. Um, but could you continue, Charlotte, with uh, 14 and just finish the rest? Yes. 
And God has both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Know you not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication, every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. Amen. That is so powerful. So powerful. You know, and, and some people, you know, You'll, they'll think, well, I am saved by grace and his mercy, and I can go out and sin, and everything's okay. But if you really have a relationship with God and Jesus Christ, if you really have that relationship, you realize that Christ, your body, is the temple. It is the body of Christ. What you do, you represent. It's like what we were talking about last week. Uh, we represent the body of Christ. We, you know, like the ambassadors that we were talking about last week. They represent the United States of America. Well, we represent uh, the son of the living God. That's who we represent. So we're going to go out and get drunk and have sex and, uh, premarital sex or this and that that is what represents is that what represents Jesus Christ the one who died and shed his blood and suffered for us suffered for us and we're gonna say okay we're gonna go this is what we represent we're able to go out there and do everything no our bodies do you not realize that our bodies are now the temple of the Holy Ghost, the temple of Jesus, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are one. We are the temple. So, and we, wherever we go, whomever we speak to, we are representatives of him. It is so important to, um, you know, like if you have a child and they're going out and, and say you you know you go to a regular church and you know all these people and then your your son or daughter acts up and acts like the worst heathen in the world i mean sometimes you think you might think wow this is kind of embarrassing they're going to be thinking uh, what kind of person raised me you know but um just to know just to know that we represent christ the one that is without sin, the one that is without blemish, and we represent him. And he lives inside of us. He's the one that gives us power and strength. It is, the Bible says it is him that lives. It is not I, but him that lives in me. And uh, it is so powerful. It is just so powerful. God is so good. And... Uh, I, I believe that we're to honor him and to respect him um, because he is our father. So <clears throat> before I go on, does anybody have anything to say? Any comments? Okay, so now let's go to, man, God is good. He is good, amen. We're going to go to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, 
and we're going to read verses 22 to 31. Hold on a second, Sister Dodie. Uh, okay. Dinah? It's Dina. Dina? Okay. Um, I'm having trouble hearing her, Sister Dodie. It's because we could hardly hear you. Uh, can you put the mute on? It's because we hear a lot of background noise. Can you put the mute on? Yes. Okay. Okay, that's great. So if you want to comment or say anything, um, just unmute yourself and then you can talk. <laughs> Anytime you want to say anything. Okay, so let's go to Acts chapter 16, verses 22 to 31. Mr. Klaus, do you mind reading that? Okay, what, Acts what, six, what chapter? Chapter 16, verses 22 to 31. It's about Paul and Silas. Okay. The crowd rose up together against them, and the chief magistrates tore their robes off them and proceeded to order them to be beaten with rods. When they had struck them with many blows, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to guard them securely. And he, having received such command, threw them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. But when midnight about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there came a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison house were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer awoke and saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And he called for the lights and rushed in and trembled, and with fear he fell down before Paul and Silas. And after he brought them out, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him, together with all who were in his house. How far do I read? To 31. Okay. Yeah, I'll finish the 32. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, praise God. Thank you. Um, so the reason I brought up these scriptures is that we know Christ and we know we're born again. We know we're washed with the blood. We are covered by the blood just like they were um, in Egypt. But the scripture here, the last one, 31, what must I do to be saved? So once you're saved, it says here, you and your household. And to me, that is saying, don't give up hope to me personally. If you are truly born again and you know Christ, keep your children or loved ones, parents, uh, relatives, keep them in prayer because it says you and your household shall be saved. If anybody knows anything else about that scripture, please let me know. Let me know. Um, God is good. God is so good. You know, even though it's true what she said, I'm sorry? It's true what she says. Yes, the word. Amen. 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 The word. You and your household shall be saved. What's so awesome is that, um, you know, God loved this people. His people didn't want to listen. Then he told Moses about Pharaoh. So then there's the protection of the lamb. They went to the, and they had to go in the wilderness for 40 years because they're still not listening. They're still, the people still are not listening. But how much love that 
God's endurance, his endurance of the people. But, you know, he knows. He knows more than we do. But even in today's life, it's the same thing. Um, people murmur, complain, don't want to listen to God. But he is so forgiving. He is so forgiving. I believe that's why the word says, um, it, you know, we're to forgive seven times, 70 times a day. But um, how awesome, how awesome God is to love us, to love us that much. Amen. That's, uh, that's really all the scriptures I have today, but uh, I'm just, I'm just going <clears> to <throat> pray pray right now and just give thanks to God. Um, Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for us to be able to be together and to learn more about your word. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Father God. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for us that we, whoever believes, may be saved. Oh, Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Father God, for protecting us, that each and every one of us, Father God, in our families, throughout the United States, throughout the world, who believes in you, Father, are protected from this coronavirus, Father God. We thank you that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. And we thank you, Father God, that we can rest in you. We thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Um, well, uh, Eloise, are you still here? Eloise, if you're talking, you're talking on me. I'm here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, before we, before, I wanted you to sing a song here at the end, but does anybody have any comments or anything they'd like to say about what we studied tonight? If so, um, go ahead. <laughs> this tonight was really playing it by ear. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I might. Hey. Playing it by the ear of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Lead and guide me. <laughs> Sister and guide Dodie, amen, amen. Sister Dodie, be sure and let me know when to, when to stop this because uh, we've got a Charlotte's Corner coming up after your, after your class is over and we've got a uh, testimony. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll let you know. Let Eloise, are you going to sing one of your own songs or what? Um. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I mean, <laughs> am I on? <laughs> um, You're on. Yeah, I've only, yeah, I can do one of the ones I've already done of mine. Okay, well, we'll still record then. Sure. Thank you. We're ready for you. Amen. All right. It's so funny because I thought the mic was on, but it wasn't at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I'm not going to say it's going to be easy I'm not going to say it's a walk in the park I'm not going to say that you won't be down on your knees That he will lift you out of the dark Redeemer of your soul, a raiser of the old, creator of the earth, and he knows his plans for you. So don't give up on hope, he's an anchor for your soul. He will guide you through, cause he knows his plans for you. 
narrow is the way that leads to life. Wide is its way to bring you down. Some days I wanted to give up. Then I realized you placed to me a crown. Redeem around my soul. Eraser of the old. Creator of the earth. And he knows his plans for you. So don't give up on hope. He's an anchor for your soul. He will guide you through. Cause he knows his plans for you. And I don't want to spend all my days. Please in your power. Name. And I don't want to tell the whole world what you've done in my heart. Redeemer of your soul, creator of the earth, creator of the earth, and he knows his plans for you. So don't give up on hope, the anchor for your soul, he will guide you through, cause he knows his plans for you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. That was awesome. You can quit recording, Miss Charlotte, if you'd like.